Now, I recently reviewed the Dell XPS 15 and the 17 refreshes here for 2022, and I liked what I saw, especially if you're a content creator. But there are other players in the market, and one in particular arrived into the studio. It's a laptop that I was really anticipating. It's the Gigabyte Aero 16. Now, this has an all-metal build, has some really nice specs. It's got a 12th Gen H-Series processor, Core i9, 12900HK. It also has the RTX 3080 Ti GPU. That's a pretty powerful combination, and it's really geared towards the creator because it has a beautiful AMOLED display. We're gonna get into it today in this video, and is this one you wanna take a look at, especially when you're looking at either the Dell XPS 15 or even the 17 that we saw here earlier this year. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Gigabyte Aero 16 here for 2022. Coming up. And before we get to the unboxing, I want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure that I'm not being paid by Gigabyte, I'm not being sponsored by Gigabyte, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own, Gigabyte is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now this review unit is on loan from Gigabyte, and once the review is over, I'll be sending it back. And this is a pretty premium laptop that's geared towards creators. If you head on over to Amazon, you can find it for $3,699. For those interested, I'll drop a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Lifting the lid, you're greeted by the unit itself. We're going to get to that, of course, in just a moment. But first, let's see what else you get. You get some documentation, which includes some warranty information. You also get a hub in the box. And this hub is going to be important because it gives you some extra ports that are missing on this 16-inch laptop. We'll show you in a little bit. And since it's a little bit tight in terms of the space between the USB-C ports, they give you this adapter that allows you to use it so you can plug in other devices as well. And you also get your power adapter. Now this is a 230 watt power adapter and it has a barrel pin connection and it's a pretty compact adapter considering the wattage it provides. And holding the unit for the first time, it has a premium all metal design with a rock solid field with very little flex in the chassis, hardly any give. That's exactly what you wanna see, rock solid metal build. Now at 2.29 kilograms or 5.05 pounds, it is definitely not the lightest out there and it is definitely heavier than the XPS 17 9720 that I recently reviewed. All right, let's check out the port selection. We're going to start off on the left side. We get one USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 port. And next to that is a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. Moving over to the right side are two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports. Now the second one will support power delivery, charging in 100 watts. And then finally, you get your DC in. That's where you'll charge this laptop with the included power adapter. And for those content creators out there, you do get the additional ports that are seemingly missing on this unit with the included hub. That gives you an RJ45, it gives you a USB-A 3.1 Gen 1 port, a mini display port out, which does 4K 120, and an HDMI, which does 4K 60. So those are some of the key ports that are missing that you might need. But notably missing, there is no SD card reader, which would have been great on this creator laptop. Now to get inside this laptop, there are 12 T5 Torx screws, remove them, pop off the bottom plate with either a guitar pick or a pry tool, and you're in. It's that easy. Now once inside, you'll notice the two fans for cooling. We'll get into the thermals and fan noise later on in this video. And there's also a 99 watt hour battery. We'll talk about the battery life and the charging times in just a little bit. But as far as what's user upgradable, there are two SOTUM slots here for you to upgrade the RAM. It's the DDR5 RAM, which is the faster RAM that we like to see, and it's running in dual channel mode. Now my review unit has 32 gigabytes of RAM, but you can configure this with up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. And there's good news when it comes to the storage. You not only get one PCIe Gen 4 slot, you get two. So that's going to be great for expanding out the storage as your needs grow. Now, this is, of course, the PCIe Gen 4. And as you can see from these reads and writes, both drives that are included in my review unit have excellent reads and writes. There's no doubt about it. 
And it has Wi-Fi 6E along with Bluetooth 5.2. Now this combo card is slotted in. That is also upgradable if you need to change it out down the road. And both have been working very well. The Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth have been flawless so far on this unit. Okay, let's talk about one of the best parts of this laptop and probably my favorite is this gorgeous 16 inch AMOLED display. It has a UHD plus resolution that's 3840 by 2400. And for those keeping score, that's 283 pixels per inch. And this panel is made by Samsung and to no one's surprise, this is simply excellent. You get all the hallmarks of an OLED display, the really deep blacks, the really high contrast, the really vibrant colors that just pop off the display. Now it has a very low Delta E score of 0.48, making this extremely color accurate and it has excellent coverage of the color gamut. You're looking at 100% sRGB, 97% Adobe RGB, 98% of the DCI-P3 wide color gamut, and 95% NTSC. So if you're a content creator that is looking at this laptop, this panel is excellent for doing content creation, such as Photoshop, Lightroom, video editing, and of course, color grading. Now, Gigabyte claims that this will get as bright as 500 nits. I didn't quite get that high, but I did get 442, which is certainly bright enough, and it is a glossy display, so you will notice some glaring reflections depending on your lighting conditions, but it wasn't too bad. And Gigabyte also offers the Aero 16 in a matte display. It's also a mini LED display that can get as bright as a thousand nits. And that one also has 165 hertz refresh rate, a really nice option to go with on this laptop. And for those content creators out there, one thing to note, this has the X-Rite factory calibration right out of the box, and it's also Pantone validated. That's something you definitely want to see, especially if you are creating content with this. And this is also an HDR display that is simply stunning. So watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube, as you're seeing here, really looks great. This is HDR content, which you're looking at right now, and this panel really shines with it. I would say overall, this is an excellent display, especially if you are a content creator. This is one you wanna choose. Now, Gigabyte sent over a really nice monitor that not only gamers will like, but creators as well, especially with this laptop that is geared towards creators. This is a nice combination. I'm gonna be doing a separate video on this monitor, but for those that are interested, I'll drop a link in the description below. But this 27 inch monitor has some really good resolution, has a really high refresh rate, and it has some excellent clarity and an intuitive menu system that I thought was really good. It also looks nice on top of that. I'll get into this monitor more in that dedicated video. Video that will be dropping very soon, but a nice combination here between the Gigabyte Aero and this really nice 27 inch monitor. And so, this is the front facing camera on the Gigabyte Aero 16 here for 2022 720p webcam, 10 IR webcam. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello, so that's good. Although, I would prefer a 1080p camera here in 2022, I think that should be the minimum. But what do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality for your Zoom needs, work from home needs? Let me know in the comments section below. And as I mentioned earlier, this is running the Core i9-12900HK. That is a 45-watt CPU from Intel. It also has 14 cores, the six performance cores and eight efficiency cores. And as you can see from these numbers, very impressive indeed, especially when it comes to multi-core performance. This thing really shines, getting close to 14,000 on the Geekbench and scoring really high on the Cinebench R23 score in unheard of numbers. It really is a performer here, especially Especially for the content creator who's going to want to do video editing and get the most out of this laptop. This will really do well, certainly for everyday tasks, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, everything handled like a breeze. And not only is the multi-core performance excellent here, you get excellent single-core performance scoring 1,926 on the Geekbench test, and it also scored 1934 on the Cinebench R23, a more sustained heavy workload test. Really good numbers indeed. And to put the multi-core score into perspective, here it is against some of its competition, specifically the Apple MacBook Pro 16 running the M1 Max chip, which did 12,226 on that same test. So really impressive numbers here by Gigabyte, certainly a performer here, there's no doubt about it. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, this is where it falls a little bit short, especially when you compare it to its competition. When I ran my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits, it did six hours and 
21 minutes. So in real world mixed usage, you're only looking at anywhere from maybe three and a half to four hours, depending on what you're doing. Maybe a little bit more, depending again on how far you push this in terms of the load. So really it just depends on how you're going to use this, but really not an all day battery life machine. But for a content creator that's going to be stationary, sitting at a desk, being able to take it with you to the office and then back home, this is certainly going to be fine. And you're going to be carrying that power adapter with you if you're going to be traveling. And this is a very capable machine when it comes to gaming. Even 4K gaming looks really good. That's thanks to that RTX 3080 Ti discrete GPU. And as you can see from the numbers, these are very playable frame rates with even Cyberpunk 2077 with 4K on the highest settings, you can still eke out about 19 frames per second. That's pretty impressive for a 16 inch laptop. And when I ran the Prime 95 stress test to see if this will throttle down under heavy load, I noticed it would reach a core temperature of around 90, 92 degrees Celsius, and then it would lower the clock speeds down to reach a core temperature of around 82, 83 degrees Celsius. That's going to give it a little bit cooler, although the maintaining of good clock speeds is here, although with a little bit of throttling, but not much, but you will hear that fan noise. Now the fan noise on this can get pretty loud, especially when you put it into the turbo mode, reaching as high as 63 decibels. Yeah, it sounds like a jet airplane taking off. But of course, when you put it into the normal mode, it gets pretty quiet and the fans will kick in intermittently only when needed. So it stayed pretty quiet in that mode. But of course, you have a lot of control over the fans. You've got the power mode, the eco mode, the normal mode, the turbo mode, and then of course you can customize it to your liking. A lot of control at your fingertips, and that's good. And when it comes to the surface temperatures under the normal mode, when you're doing everyday tests, it remain relatively cool. But when you put it under extreme or heavy load, it can heat up pretty quickly with some hot spots as you see here. And for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger and it's made easier by the fact that it has a reverse notch on the top of the lid. That makes it a lot easier. Now, as far as this keyboard is concerned, I really like it. Now, these are black keys against the silver chassis here, and it's easy to differentiate, especially when you're using the backlighting on it, which is nice and strong. And you can see the keys pretty nicely in a dark room or a dimly lit environment that allows you to get work done in that environment. And that's always good. Now the touchpad has worked out pretty well, very responsive when it comes to scrolling and all the gestures working as you'd expect. Good job on that front. Now the audio is actually pretty good out of the speakers on the Gigabyte Aero, and here it is when we listen to Epidemic Sound, and for those that want to save 10% on Epidemic Sound, see the link in the description below. But as far as this, the sound is concerned, it's got good bass, good mids, and decent volume. Let's check it out. Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Aero 16 YE5 here for 2022? Now, if you're a content creator, I think this is a nice choice, especially if you're looking for the Dell XPS 15 or the XPS 17, and you want something as an alternative to that, and that gives you a really nice AMOLED display and has a really nice all metal build. This might be your ticket, although it's gonna have a few shortcomings, namely the battery life. But of course, if you're a creator, most of you are gonna be using this at a desk most of the time. But but it is portable for a 16 inch laptop that allow you to go take it with you. This gorgeous display is absolutely stunning. It's a really nice display, great fan control over the usage on this. But of course those fans will kick in and will get pretty loud. But when you're in the normal mode, it stays relatively cool and quiet and that's good. Now it is expensive of course, but creators are not looking so much as the price tag as to whether or not it can get the job done. And in that front, this certainly fits the bill. 
So what do you think about this bad boy? The Aero 16, the YE5, that's the model number. Nice sturdy metal build, really rock solid. A little bit of heft to it, of course, as I mentioned, but it is on par with that of the XPS 15 and 17 in terms of the build. Core i9 12900HK is a real powerhouse. And as you saw from the single thread and the multi-thread performance, really, really impressive. One of the best out there in terms of the size to performance ratio, really good. Now the Achilles heel, of course, will be the battery life not the greatest here and not an unexpected but of course if you are that content creator you're probably going to be using this at your desk most of the time but it is portable enough despite it's a little bit of heft to be taking it with you on the go so it is portable but it is meant to be used at a desk that's for sure now, as far as that AMOLED display, UHD plus resolution, 3840 by 2400, absolutely gorgeous. It's got the high contrast. It's got the really great color accuracy, great coverage of the color gamut. Really is something that you want, especially if you're going to do color grading, Photoshop, Lightroom, and of course, video editing and say Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve worked out really well. What do you think about the Gigabyte Aero 16? I think it's a really nice choice. Not cheap, but it, again, it'll definitely get the job done with its powerful processor, powerful graphics, and overall solid build. Again, I wanna know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.